Dear viewers, welcome to EPG Partshala. Myself, Pooja Kumari from Department of Zoology, University of Delhi. Today, we'll learn about a subtopic of molecular genetics, which includes methods for gene identification, that is a technique known as PCR or polymerase chain reaction. So let's talk about PCR. But by the end of this module, you should be able to learn about a brief history of development of the polymerase chain reaction, that is PCR technique, the reaction components in the making of cocktail of PCR mix together with the procedure. You will also be acquainted with the numerous applications and limitations of the procedure. Various modifications that have arisen since the first uses of the technique will also be dealt with. And at last, we will summarize our topic. So, let's talk about PCR. Polymerase chain reaction is a powerful technique used to amplify a single or few copies of particular DNA segment. It can amplify a particular DNA sequence by several orders of magnitude. This circumvents the need to clone a DNA fragment in bacteria if it is to be amplified. Carrie Mullis, along with Michael Smith got Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the landmark invention in 1993. This technique can be used to amplify both single and double-stranded molecules if the flanks are known. Flanks are known reason lying outside the unknown reason of the interest. PCR amplifies small target molecules that is 100 to 1000 base pairs long. The high specificity and sensitivity combined with the ease of performance has revolutionized biological research and even investigations. It is now a very common and indispensable technique used in every biological lab and has variety of applications. The technique is so powerful that, the, that it amplifies DNA from minuscule source DNA material even when it is of poor quality such as boiled bacterial colony. The basic principle in doing PCR is very simple. It is a chain reaction and leads to doubling of DNA molecules in subsequent cycles. One DNA molecule is used to make two copies which leads to four copies and then eight and so on. The principle of replicating DNA using two primers was already in place and described by Khurana in 1971. The technique was however limited by the primer synthesis and poor quality of or impure polymerases. Polymerases are enzymes that string together individual DNA building blocks to form long strands. The building blocks are the bases adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. A primer is needed to which the building blocks are attached. The primer also serves the purpose of specificity as it is complementary to a subset of DNA sequence within the template DNA. Template DNA is the DNA strand whose multiple copies are desired. The final PCR product that is amplified DNA can be digested with restriction enzymes, cloned or sequenced. The original PCR was however inefficient in being labor intensive time consuming and required large quantities of clunio or T4 DNA polymerases. This was owing to the high heat intensity or instability of the enzyme at higher temperatures. When double stranded DNA was denatured into single strands by thermal denaturation at 96 degrees centigrade, the enzyme activity was destroyed. Hence, fresh enzyme required to be added to the mix after heating stage of each cycle. This became a major bottleneck for the technique and, can, and the breakthrough came with the isolation and purification of the thermostable DNA polymerases. The thermostable polymerase was first isolated from the bacterium Thermus aquaticus residing in the thermal pool of Yellowstone National Park. The enzyme was named TAC DNA polymerase that resulted in automation of the technique. Now we know what is PCR. So let's discuss methodologies that is how PCR can be performed. First, we, first will be its reaction components. For PCR, five chemical components are needed apart from water, which includes DNA template as its first component. Template contains the target DNA sequence to be amplified. Target DNA concentration depends upon the source and the method. 
plasmid dna is small but is enriched for the target dna site on the other hand genomic dna contains only one target site per genome copy thus for efficient amplification genomic dna has to be used in higher concentration as compared to plasmid dna both quantity and quality of target dna affects the result it is good to use pure dna devoid of any rna or protein impurities second component will be dna polymerases a dna polymerase synthesize new strands complementary to the target dna sequence for a dna polymerase to be used in pcr it should be thermostable that is it should be able to withstand high denaturation temperatures of 95 to 100 degree centigrade this is important so that new enzyme does not need to be added in each successive cycles also the enzyme should have optimum activity at around 75 degree centigrade which is annealing temperature the first enzyme to be discovered with these characteristics was tac dna polymerase from thermus aquaticus isolated from hot springs it is efficient and is able to add 60 base pair per second at 70 degree centigrade pfu polymerases from pyrococcus furiosus on the other hand is used widely owing to its higher fidelity than tac unlike tac pfu polymerase has 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity meaning it can remove faulty nucleotides from the growing 3 prime end as soon as they are added the proof reading pfu polymerase produces products having blunt ends there are some fidelity or accuracy problems of tac dna polymerases tac makes dna product that have adenine that is a residues or overhang at the 3 prime end of the both strands thus tac is not desirable in case where high fidelity is needed however these 3 prime overhangs can be used in ta cloning whereby a cloning vectors having a 3 prime t that is thymine overhang is used thus enabling ligation of the pcr product into the plasmid vector recommended concentration of the enzyme is between 0.5 to 1 units per 50 microliter reaction other thermostable polymerases in use are thermus thermophiles polymerase thermus flavus polymerase thermococcus literalis polymerase called vent polymerase and pyrococcus species G, gbd vent polymerases our third requirement is primers to start synthesis dna polymerase requires a primer complementary in sequence to the target dna polymerase now starts adding nucleotides to the end of the primer dna primers can be 15 to 30 base pairs in length for specificity it is important that our primer is at least 20 base pair in length this length is long enough for adequate specificity and short enough for the primer to anneal to the template dna at the set annealing temperatures the probability of occurrence of the length of sequence in any genome is generally less than 1 that means it is often essentially unique this ensures specificity of binding to the target sequence specificity is further provided by the fact that reaction utilizes two such primers that are specified distance apart the probability of occurrence of such a combination other than the target chosen is nearly zero thus length and the distance between the primers provides us a unique address to the target sequence in a symmetric pcr amplification primers are present in an equal concentration and in excess usually in the range of 0.1 micromolar to 1 micromolar for any set of pcr primers melting temperature that is tm and secondary structures are of important considerations and melting temperature is the temperature at which half of the dna duplex has become single stranded or in other words the temperature at which half of the dna is denatured thus the stability of primer template dna duplex is accounted by melting temperatures primer with melting temperature in the range of 52 to 60 degree centigrade at melting temperature above than 65 degree centigrade secondary annealing may occur the two primers in a set should have a tm difference of more than 5 degrees not more than 5 degree centigrade a difference of 
फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड और मोर विल लीड टू नो एम्पलीफिकेशन नाउ वी नीड टू नो दैट हाउ विल कैलकुलेट प्राइमर्स मेल्टिंग टेम्परेचर जी सी बॉन्ड इज स्ट्रॉगर देन ए टी बॉन्ड एंड एज अ रिजल्ट रिक्वायर्स मोर एनर्जी टू बी ब्रोकन अकॉर्डिंगली द मेल्टिंग टेम्परेचर कुड बी कैलकुलेटेड बाई एडिंग टू डिग्री फॉर ईच ए और टी एंड फोर डिग्री फॉर ईच जी और सी ऑल्सो नोन एज वैलिस रूल दिस कैलकुलेशन एज्यूम्स अ सॉल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ पॉइंट नाइन मोलर हाईवर लेटर ऑन इट वॉज अंडरस्टूड दैट मेल्टिंग टेम्परेचर इज नॉट जस्ट अ फंक्शन ऑफ कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ बेस स्पेयर्स वॉट्सन क्रिक बॉन्ड्स एंड सॉल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन नियरेस्ट नेबर्स और नियर बाई न्यूक्लियोटाइट्स वेयर फाउंड टू इन्फ्लुएंस मेल्टिंग टेम्परेचर नाउ अ डेज फार मोर सोफिस्टिकेटेड एंड एक्यूरेट एस्टिमेशन मेथड्स आर इन प्लेस इन्वॉल्विंग एंथेल्पी एंड एंट्रोपी चेंजेस दैट आर बियॉन्ड द स्कोप ऑफ दिस टॉपिक फॉर एक्यूरेट बाइंडिंग ऑफ आर प्राइमर्स टू द टेम्पलेट डी एन ए वी नीड टू नो द प्राइमर्स एनीलिंग टेम्परेचर प्रॉपर एनीलिंग टेम्परेचर गिव्स द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ डी एन ए डी एन ए ड्यूप्लेक्स टू हाई एनीलिंग टेम्परेचर विल रिजल्ट इन इन सफिशियंट एनीलिंग टू द प्राइमर्स विद द टेम्पलेट रिजल्टिंग इन डिक्रीज प्रोडक्ट यील्ड टू लो एनीलिंग टेम्परेचर ऑन द अदर हैंड will result in decreased specificity as error in nucleotide pairing or mismatches will increase several secondary structures are formed by intermolecular interactions between different primers or by intramolecular interactions with the same primer when these are formed by intramolecular interactions they may result in loops known as hairpins when the primer is homologous to itself intermolecular interactions between the two primers result in primer dimer formation known as self dimerization if however the sense primer is homologous to the anti sense primer intermolecular interaction would result in cross dimer formation no secondary structure in form of hairpins or primer duplex should form within or between primer pairs as primers are used in higher amounts in the reaction mix as compared to the target genes if it will be complementary they will tend to hybridize with each other this reduces the product yield any compro any compromise with the linear state of the primer will result in decreased availability of primers for the reaction and hence decreasing the overall amplification since DNA in both the complementary pairs is composed of a combination of four alphabets only some degree of homology and the secondary structure are inevitable to occur however low level of homology and secondary structures will not be stable at high temperatures softwares are available that can be used to design primers to check secondary structures and to calculate melting temperatures some examples include primer 3 primer blast oligo analyzer 3 gc content and gc clamps should also be taken care of while designing primers gc content is the number of g and c bases as a percentage of total bases it should be kept between 40 to 60% gc clamp is a long tail of high gc content towards the 3 prime end as a result it would bind strongly with its complementary sequence and melt with melt with great difficulty hence more than 3g and c should be avoided in the last five bases our fourth requirement for doing pcr is nucleotides the building blocks for new dna strands are single units of the four dntps that is deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates named as adenine guanine cytosine and thymine repeated thawing and freezing cycles are not good for dntps thus aliquots of desired concentration are prepared for use dntp mix should contain equal concentration of all the four nucleotides which is commercially available as 10 millimolar dntp mix the final working concentration of each dntp is usually kept between 50 to 200 micromolars Fifth requirement for PCR reaction is buffer. Buffer is needed to provide a stable pH to the reaction medium necessary for enzyme actions. The reaction buffers may also contain magnesium chloride as a component or it can also be added separately. 
magnesium chloride is a cofactor for tac enzyme increasing enzyme activity by several folds the commercial purpose uh, the buffer is supplied with the polymerase and as a 10x concentrate the standard final concentration of magnesium chloride in the reaction mix for pcr polymerase is 1.5 millimolar next water is the sixth requirement for com completion of pcr it provides a matrix in which the other components are dissolved and interact for this the water should be free of any impurities deionized water serves the purpose in most cases apart from this some reagents can be added to improve the reaction specificity and amplification dimethyl sulfoxide that is dmso in the range of 0 to 10% volume by volume can be used for better denaturation of longer target sequences which is more than 1 kilo bases and also prevents enzyme aggregation formamide on the other hand can be used to improve the specificity of the reaction if the template is gc rich glycerol can be added to improve amplification polyethylene glycol that is peg is a very special additive of choice if dna template concentration is low it works by excluding the solvent and helping the polymerase to find the template now let's understand how pcr works pcr is a three step cycling process and it involves three stages the first stage is denaturation then annealing and then final is extinction a general pcr undergoes 25 to 35 cycles depending mainly upon the amplicon length first we will discuss about denaturation in the denaturation step the double stranded dna and the complementary primer pairs denature or open up to single strands this is routinely carried out to at 95 degree centigrade for 30 seconds for pure dna templates if the amplicon is gc rich however then 2 to 4 minute of denaturation is essential for colony pcr initial denaturation of 5 minute is generally recommended colony pcr is done using bacterial colony itself instead of using dna the high temperature sets the molecules in the reaction tubes in brownian motion due to which all the reaction components are in separate in a state of com constant motion and mixing second step in pcr is annealing the melting temperature of the primer determines the annealing temperature for the reaction it is usual practice to keep annealing temperature 5 degree lower than the lowest melting temperature of the two primers this is however applicable to change as per the results obtained the temperature of the reaction mix is then lowered down from denaturation temperature to annealing temperature when the temperature has reached the melting temperature more and more the primer molecule would have found their correct complement and would begin to anneal as the temperature reaches the annealing temperature the stable duplex formation between the primer and the target dna would be complete would be completed final step in pcr is extension as the duplex formation completes temperature starts increasing from around 55 degree centigrade to around 72 degree centigrade polymerase also gets activated by the magnesium ions during the time of duplex formation and starts finding their substrate the substrate for the polymerase are the primer template duplexes the primer the polymerase starts capturing the dntp and incorporating them in the growing chain of nucleotides as each dntp is incorporated a pyrophosphate is released which in turn provides the energy for the polymerase to move further and capture another dntp this continues till the next cycle the next cycle begin as the temperature in the tube again increases to denaturation temperature where in the action of polymerase ceases the chain grows in 5 prime to 3 prime direction pcr produces fragments at an exponential rate that is a function of reaction cycle the end product consists of three types of fragments that is original template molecules amplicons and anchored products amplicon is the desired end product it is double stranded and formed either from anchored product or 
other amplicon not from the original template. The amplicon sequence stretches from that of the forward primer till that of the reverse primer. So, it is the actual desired length but amplicon start being produced starting from cycle 2. In cycle 1, anchored products are formed. These are DNA molecules that are bound to the primer only on one side. As the polymerase does not have a cue where the stop synthesis, where to stop synthesis, anchored products tend to be lengthier than the actual desired lens. Anchored products are only produced from the original template DNA and their numbers increases linearly with the cycle number. Original template molecules, anchored products and amplicons all serve as the target for polymerase to attach. The explosive reaction leads to the production of billions of copies of amplicon as per original template molecules. The result can be analyzed on the agarose gel. After PCR completion, we need to know about what happens when the process reaches its plateau. Plateau effect is marked by lessening of exponential increase of product accumulation in PCR. Depletion of DNTPs or accumulation of pyrophosphate is known to affect this rate. It is however a self-limiting process where accumulation of double-stranded PCR products called as amplicons themselves leads to attenuation of reaction. This occurs in the late stage when product reaches 0.3 to 1 nanomolar concentration. At the start of the reaction, when the reagents are in excess, the graph of DNA concentration versus cycle number shows a straight line. That is, the exponential increase in the product formation is constant initially. The reaction then slows down to the linear phase where the product accumulation is not exponential. When plateau reaches, no increase in product is seen. Now we know what is PCR. So, let us talk about applications for what reason we should perform PCR. The first clinical application of doing PCR was published in the year 1985 and was involved the analysis of sickle cell anemia. Classical PCR has since then been in use and used in all fields of biology and medicines. Some broad applications are in amplification of minute quantities of DNA to be used in DNA fingerprinting and in forensics that is in the criminal investigation and paternity testing. Second is diagnosis of diseases, carriers and in prenatal diagnosis of diseases and gene expression analysis. Third is in study of fossils by analysis of ancient DNA such as from preserved specimens or fossils. Other uh, applications include detection of microbial genes in antibiotic resistance. Generation of probes for use in hybridization technique is another application of doing PCR. PCR is also used in genome mapping, DNA sequencing and metagenomics. In analysis of mutations also PCR can be used. Deletions and insertion on genes can be tested by analyzing size of amplified fragment. There are several limitations of performing PCR like in order to amplify a gene, information is needed for designing primers, acquiring information may not always be feasible. There is always a possibility of getting false positive results due to contamination with extra DNA. Cross contamination between samples must be avoided. Next is non-specific amplification which is another problem and is often related to concentration of magnesium ion which must be carefully controlled within appropriate limits. Also a single protocol is not sufficient for all kinds of samples. Hence reaction conditions and reagent concentration have to be standardized for different samples. Reagents used in PCR are costly and lastly PCR inhibitors like indigo dye and hemoglobin can block the amplification due to which we will not get desired amplification. To overcome these limitations there are several modifications uh, by which we can perform PCR. First modification includes hot start PCR, non-specific Non-specific amplification may occur at low temperatures if primers misanneal. To avoid this, the tag polymerase is blocked with the help of 
specific antibodies at low temperatures. At higher temperatures, when activity is needed, the antibodies leave the active center of the enzymes. Hot star, PC, hot star PCR reduces non-specific bind, binding and primer dimer formation, increasing the product yield. Next is real-time PCR or qPCR, which is also one of the modifications for PCR. The PCR product can be detected in real time with no need to run on agarose gel electrophoresis post the PCR experiment. Quantitative PCR is used to quantify the target DNA simultaneously while amplifying it. The start amount of the DNA can be quantified. The amp DNA amplification can be calculated per cycle. The reaction can also be subject to melt curve analysis to check whether single product is being produced. If multiple peaks are encountered, it means multiple PCR products are present and assay requires further optimization. For this, a fluorescent probe specific for the target DNA is used. It that consists of fluorescent reporter and fluorescent quencher attached at the opposite ends of the primer. The reporter molecule attaches itself to the target DNA upon replication due to exonuclease activity of polymerase when quencher is removed from the reporter, light is emitted. Reporter is only released upon complete polymerization of the strand by TAC. So, cycle after cycle, the fluorescent intensity increases. This allows for quantification of the product. It also allows to see whether a DNA sequence is present in a sample and the number of copies if present. Cyber green, evergreen dyes and fluorophore containing DNA probes such as TACMAN are commonly used for this purpose. Next is allele specific PCR which is done by, for diagnostic PCR for detection of single nucleotide polymorphism also called SNP. Different alleles can be identified based on SNP specific primers. It requires prior knowledge of gene or DNA sequence. The 3' prime end of the primer encompasses the SNP. In the absence of the SNP, in the allele being amplified using stringent con conditions, amplification will not occur or will be less efficient. Asymmetric PCR, which is a modification of PCR, is done in a double-stranded DNA if amplification of only one of the strand is required. This is done for sequencing and hybridization purposes. This is done by taking one of the primers in excess specific for the strand that is to be amplified. Extra cycles are required in the case. Next is assembly PCR which is used for generating long DNA molecules. Primers with an overlap are used to create oligonucleotide products. These oligonucleotide products have overlaps that are then used to generate long DNA fragments. If we have bacterial colonies, then instead of using DNA directly, colony PCR can be performed, which is also a PCR modification. A short denaturation step at 100 degree centigrade is included prior to cycling to the release of DNA. This is a crude method and can be used to screen for correct DNA vector constructs. Next one is high fidelity PCR. When extremely pure product is desired, high fidelity polymerases are used that bind to their target more reliably. Then ISSR PCR that is inter sequence specific PCR which is used to determine genetic relatedness among populations and determining genomic instability. This is done by using primers from micro satellite regions, simple specific sequence repeats. Other one is inverse PCR. It allows amplification of unknown sequence surrounding a known target sequence. The DNA fragment is first digested and then circularized. Primers are designed to be extended outward from the known segment. The rest of the circle is hence amplified that is formed of unknown sequences. Next is RT-PCR or reverse transcription PCR which is used to amplify DNA from RNA. It is used in gene expression profiling where reverse transcriptase is used to convert RNA to a complementary DNA, which is then amplified. 
it can be used to map the location of exons and introns in a gene. Next is nested PCR which is used as a good modification of PCR. If unwanted primer pairing is a problem that leads to non-specific amplification, then two sets of primers are used. One round of amplification generates product that act as a target sequence for the next round of rep re uh, replication. First PCR might generate product that contains non-specific undesired DNA. But in the second PCR, the primers used have binding sites different from those of the first primer pair. This way, the adjacent contaminating sequence are removed of the final product. Other uh, modification is touchdown PCR, which is also known as step down PCR. The annealing temperature is initially kept 3 to 4 degree above than the melting temperature of the primers used. This imparts specificity to the primer binding in initial stages. Then as the reaction proceeds, the annealing temperature is brought down gradually. In the later stages, the annealing temperature is 3 to 4 degree centigrade lower than the melting temperature of the primers. This lower temperature permits efficient amplification of the products formed in the initial stages. This way, non-specific background is significantly reduced. Some more modification includes thermal asymmetric interlaced PCR or tail PCR, methylation PCR that is MSP, solid phase PCR, splicing by overlap or overhang extension PCR, linear after the exponential PCR that is late PCR, multiplex PCR, multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification that is MLPA. So, at last now we will summarize this lecture. Polymerase chain reaction is a powerful technique which is used to amplify a single or few copies of particular DNA segment. It can amplify a particular DNA sequence by several orders of magnitude. It is a chain reaction and leads to doubling of the DNA molecules in subsequent cycles. One DNA molecule is used to make two copies which leads to four copies, then eight copies and so on. Carey Mullis along with Michael Smith got Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this landmark invention in 1993. For PCR, five chemical components are needed apart from water which includes DNA template, DNA polymerase, primer nucleotide, primers, nucleotides, reaction buffers and water. PCR is a three step cycling process involving three stages that is denaturation, annealing and extension. A general PCR undergoes 25 to 35 cycles depending upon the amplicon length. Denaturation leads to the strand separation at annealing temperature, primers anneals to the target DNA and at the end around 72 degree centigrade polymerase extends the strands basis by base generating billions of copies of the target DNA at the end of the reaction. Amplification of minute quantities of DNA can be used in DNA fingerprinting and in forensics, in criminal investigations and paternity testings. It is also used in diagnosis of diseases, carriers and in prenatal diagnosis of diseases, gene expression analysis, etc. But there are few limitations of PCR such as false positive results may be obtained due to contamination with the extra DNA. So cross contamination between samples must be avoided. Non-specific amplification is another problem to overcome these uh, problems, limitations some modifications have been made to the PCR technique like hot start PCR, real time PCR, allele specific PCR, etc. Hot start PCR reduces non specific binding and primer dimer formation, increasing product yield. For detection of SNPs, allele specific PCR is used. In a double stranded DNA, if amplification of only one of the strands is required, then asymmetric PCR is done. Nested PCR allows amplification of unknown sequences surrounding of a known target sequence. Reverse transcription PCR is used to amplify DNA from RNA. So I hope this lecture will help you in understanding the topic nicely. Thank you.